Now this demonstration here is to demonstrate the uh, circuit breaker that it has in here. There's a there's a relay in there that if if you pick the wrong uh, uh, selector reading or selector range here, as far as voltage or or current, if it's too much that the equipment here can handle, the circuitry in there will sense that and pop this circuit breaker. And I'm going to demonstrate it with this here. So it's I. Uh, put the meter in to measure 2.5 volts so the full the max deflection will be 252.5 volts <laughs> but I'm going to measure 12 volts from this from this battery here so I'm going to touch right into it real quick and you see it popped it sensed that that voltage being too high that the meter is capable of handling at that setting and it popped the circuit breaker I just reset it and I'm going to go to the appropriate range for 12 volts. Do it again. There was a max deflection there, 10 volts, but I'm actually measuring 2.5 volts or 12 volts rather. And there it is. And that there measures, let's see, I'm at the 25 range. I'm measuring 15 volts. Uh, because I have it on a charger here so it's measuring the, the, that charge going into the battery there at 15 volts uh, so there you have it uh, the uh, overload protection on, on this particular model and once again here if you look closely you see series 6 XLPM uh, the key letter there that you should, you should uh, uh, pay attention to is the P for protected uh, they have older models that are not protected so the same measurements would have would have burnt up one of the resistors in here one of the low setting resistors and that could change the whole measurement device uh, miscalibrating miscalib it and you would have to have it replaced another reason why I would choose the Simpson 260 uh, uh, rather than those other digital multimeters for, for extreme cases is that uh, it only uses that 1.5 D cell battery that's all you need that 9 volt battery is to run the uh, protective circuit but if you disconnect that battery this device becomes unprotected but in an extreme case you can still be able to make measurements with just that D cell battery uh, for for more details on this particular device there's a website that has nothing but this piece of gear simpsons260.com it has uh, PDF manuals on this on all the uh, models that, that that's ever been produced uh, old photocopied manuals on, on PDF form uh, that shows you how to measure tube theory you know those older radios that, that, that use tubes it, it shows a little tutorial on how to measure those and, and what to look out for excellent site I mean I learned so much off of that site alone not only that I found a uh, an army uh, technical manual on how to calibrate this on your own if you have you know other equipment to do the calibration with and that is excellent I mean this here I would equate to like a, a good old you know 55 Chevy where you could you know make your own repairs on the piece of equipment here all these components are easy to take out and replace. You could probably replace all these with current, you know, better accuracy resistors in there. And uh, it'll show you how to make the measurements and, and calibrate this thing. Uh, and it's, it's, you could work on this if you, if you have any electronic inclination. And that's what makes this so, so, so valuable is that, you know, a, a regular Joe Schmo that's, you know, could work on this piece of equipment here. Uh, they're cheap on eBay. I mean, you could probably find a few, but be careful. Uh, buyer beware. So here's a demonstration of uh, measuring current out of this uh, solar panel there, charging up my uh, battery here. I'm indoors. It's nighttime. I'm going off of fluorescent lights, so it's not be really being charged. But this charge controller has uh, some, what you call it, uh, a diagnostic sort of uh, circuitry in there to let you know uh, 
by sight how your battery is doing, how it's charging and all that stuff. So it's going to use a little bit of current. So for this demonstration, we, let's just measure what it's doing. And what, what I like to emphasize is uh, the relationship between analog meters and digital meters as far as the readout. Uh, old timers, and, and I'm not an old timer, but, but, but I, like, I like analog displays because it's a nice sort of like representation of what's going on. You could pick up subtle differences in what's, what your circuitry is doing. Like this here, it's, it's set for uh, 50 milliamps maximum range, and at the 50 uh, mark there, it looks like, let me see, 10, 5, about 4 milliamps of current, and it's fluctuating. It's running that LED that's behind there, or the circuitry in there, so that's the pulses that you're seeing. And on this fluke here, I'm reading 3.7 milliamps of uh, power being used, and it jumps up to around 12. Yeah, 12 milliamps. My analog meter here, let me see, that's... Uh, I see it that it's jumping up to maybe 7 milliamps, so there's still some differences, but you can see the... Uh, the smooth action of the analog meter, uh, the dial there just, just you know, you can see every little subtle movement of what your circuitry is doing. Where, where this one here is just jumping all over the place. Uh, I mean, some people can get used to it and everything and got to make do, but, but, but for a smoother sort of uh, thermometer reading of your, of, your, of your equipment, I like the analog meter for, for tests like this. Here's that current meter clamp there is so low that it, it doesn't even register it right there that's uh, point something milliamps and, and 10 milliamps around there maybe and, and it's not even you know registering but obviously here you're showing some sort of uh, some sort of uh, current being being conducted uh, let's measure resistance real quick uh, one just uh, one of the many disadvantages of having the Simpson 260 or analog meters is it's old school. You're going to have to do things the old way. So you have to set your range if you're measuring something into its range and, and manually sort of calibrate things. And with this here, to uh, calibrate resistance, you short out the two test leads and you have a uh, ohm adjustment here. And you just put that into its uh, range that it needs to go to. in the ohms uh, style there and let's measure uh, resistance first we'll start off with Kimber 1911 45 stainless steel how much resistance can you have with stainless steel one end here the other end around here you're not going to encounter any resistance with the 45. Resistance of a USP HK45 blued polymer uh, handle there. So let's just pick a point anywhere here and on the slide. Pick another point. No resistance when it comes to the USP45 HK. And it shouldn't be. Let's measure the uh, polymer. See how much resistance we'll have with the polymer. Not much. Plastic. Excellent insulator. Maximum resistance with the polymer. But when you get to the metal, you have uh, no resistance whatsoever, as you should be. All right. This is. Gorilla Geek, have a good one. Hello? Hello? What? You good? Yeah, man. Don't be going nowhere. Hello? Who's this? Gorilla. What's up?